Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. There are three new working groups formed this week. Turtles all the way down, fixing non-sudden data in the ECS, decoupled rendering, and better release notes. Better release notes is, well, probably self-explanatory, while decoupled rendering aims to allow the decoupling of rendering from the main schedule. This decoupling could make it easier to have first-party frame limiting, like Bevy frame pace, and could have benefits for async work. An example of this might be Bevy fixed update task. Turtles all the way down has a design talk and intends to eliminate non-send resources, improving the experience along the way. As always, the working groups can be found in the working groups channel in the Bevy Discord, so go check them out if you want to get involved. Meanwhile, Score Warrior became a corporate titanium sponsor this week, which is always great to see. The company was founded in 2015 and is focused on Forex strategy and mid-core MMO games. Speaking of sponsors, if you want to donate to Bevy, head on over to bevyengine.org donate and join me in supporting the development effort. With that, we're right into the PRs this week with Procedural Atmospheric Scattering. 16.314 implements Procedural Atmospheric Scattering from a 2020 paper. This approach should scale well even down to mobile hardware and is physically accurate. Seeing this PR come together in Discord was really fun, and it seems like there's more to come from the authors. The demos that I was seeing pop up in Discord are also just incredibly good looking. And as part of the ongoing no standardization of Bevy, Bevy Asset was switched to use Core Prelude instead of Standard Prelude when bringing items into scope, and the Bevy Platform Support Crate was created for the first time. And the following crates all got no standard support this week, including Bevy Ally, Bevy Diagnostic, Bevy Input Focus, and Bevy Time. There's some cool no standard stuff later around in this issue, so stick around if you're interested in that. After Entity Relations merged last week, Parent was renamed to Child Of, marking a change from has an X towards is an X naming, making the new relation names Child Of and Children rather than Parent and Children for 0.16. And a new example detailing how to use relation APIs was introduced in 17.443, while 17.447 added support for non-VEC data structures, specifically small VEC in this PR, in those relations. A new from world macro was introduced in 17352, which seems to be mostly interesting for easier implementation of from world when all member fields also already implement from world. It's worth noting that any type that already implements default already implements from world, so this PR feels really like shoring up some of the cracks here. And rendering is taking advantage of the new retained rendering world in 16985 by retaining render material instances and render mesh material IDs, resulting in performance improvements. These types are the extracted instances of a material and a mapping from mesh instance to material and binding IDs in the render world. Meanwhile, progress on comprehensive source tracking was made with 15607 landing this week. This PR introduced call site tracking for observers and hooks. Observer triggers now have a caller field with this information. And one that I'm personally very excited about, 13120 introduced default query filters, which are an opt-in approach to functionality that can power entity disabling. Default query filters is extensible by third parties, which can register default filters and thus hide entities from Bevy and other consumers. This means you can be sure that nobody else is touching your entities if by default you don't want them to. I think that things like entity disabling alongside entity cloning make it really interesting to do things like respawning or producing multiple instances of an entity that should have the same set of components when it starts with default values. Because as far as I can tell, you can make a clone of that entity, disable it, and then whenever you need a new one, clone that entity. Moving on to 17.463, two new functions are introduced, insert recursive and remove recursive. These new functions allow a user to insert a component on an entity and all related entities, or remove a component on an entity and all related entities. This functionality takes advantage of the new generic relations API, so isn't just restricted to child up and children, which is why I said all related entities rather than and all children. And of course, Alice's merge train is a maintainer level view into active PRs, both those that are merging and those that need work. So definitely go check this thread out if you're looking to get more involved or just looking for that maintainer level deep insight. And with that, we're into our showcases with Bevy Gurk demo. This is a networked game tech stack demo that can support single or multiplayer games. The networking is supported through Renet2 and Bevy Replicon. And if you're feeling a little frustrated lately, maybe you'll like Whack Key. This in progress whack a mole style game is for the big mode game jam. And ray marching is always super fun to see. This is a learning project bringing together SDFs, that's sign distance fields, and a dynamic BVH, which is a bounding volume hierarchy, to power dynamic shape insertion, removal, and transforms in this ray marching demo. And next up, we've got a demo for some UI with bevy blur regions. 
If I zoom in on this here, you can see the effect. This is with Betty E GUI and Betty Blur regions combined to make the translucent UI for this game. And Asteroids inspired games are always fun. This Asteroids inspired ship in Asteroids game is powered by Avian 2D and a custom line shader. And oh, am I excited for this one. This is Bevy on the Game Boy Advance. The no standard work on Bevy is paying off with a proof of concept work that deploys Bevy to the Game Boy Advance. So far, this demo has been run on Game Boy Advance emulators, as well as on a hypervisor on real DS hardware, with real direct on Game Boy Advance attempts coming soon. The demo uses Bevy's main branch and a crate called AGB to produce the ROM, and systems, plugins, resources, queries, and the gamepad input API, it all just works. This is an incredible proof of concept that really brings home what the no standard work can enable in the future. It's pretty wild to see what is effectively just a Bevy app capable of running on some of this retro hardware. And from retro to Torp, Torp built out a region selection screen with highlighted regions using a layer on top of Bevy UI that enables asset-based UI development using RON files. And then we've got a new outdoor environment for Varg. This outdoor environment makes use of two directional lights, the sun and the ground reflection, a weak ambient light, and weak environment maps, as well as strategically placed point lights. I love seeing progress on Varg, and it is available on Steam to wishlist. Next up, we've got a demo that uses two textures attached via a Material 2D to persist destructible terrain to alternating textures per frame. In this demo, you can see the player writing the word bevy in the ground. Next up, we've got Mirror Stones Walls. This is an isometric MMORPG with support for click and drag selection of terrain. This allows you to generate walls around the area. And later on in the week, we saw roofs as well. And Bevy Easy Player Handler is an in-progress player and party handler system integrated with a local SQL Lite database. The current version is in the process of being extracted from a pre-existing Bevy 0.14 game with the intention to update it to 0.15 eventually. And next up, Bevy OXR powers this Gorilla Tag style demo with Half-Life Alex style locomotion. The demo uses Quest 3 controllers. Our next one is fairly self-explanatory. It is a jellyfish that you can see bouncing up and down <laughs> in true jellyfish style. There's no code associated with this one, but it does look pretty cool. Next up, we've got a demo using Unreal Engine as an editor. This is using Unreal Engine's editor to export a landscape as a height map. The objects in the scene are exported via a script that writes out the object type and transform information. Bevy then reads this information and spawns accordingly. And this is a Fog of War prototype for 2D Bevy games. This uses analytical shapes rendered to a texture and is open source so you can go check it out. And from 2D to old school 3D, this is a dungeon crawler game set in the catacombs with spooky hallways and enemies to fight. And back to 2D land, the eyes for this rotating moonlight circle follow the user's cursor. To help debug the implementation, gizmos were used as you can see here. And that brings us to the crate releases. Our first crate release is going to have a bit of a bright demo here in a second. And that's a lighting 2D library for Bevy in Bevy Lit. Version 0.5 of Bevy Lit introduces Frustum culling for lighting artifacts. This improves performance by only rendering lights within the viewport. A new shadows enabled option for Point Light 2D provides more control over shadow projection. And notably, WebGL 2 support has been dropped in favor of focusing on WebGPU compatibility. There's some more details about why support was dropped in the thread, but if I'm being honest, WebGPU is the future. And unless you have an immediate need for WebGL 2, it does make a lot of sense to focus on WebGPU compatibility. And next up, we've got Bevy Flare. Bevy Flare enables styling Bevy UI interfaces using CSS syntax. The library allows you to load what are effectively CSS files via assets. And for our devlogs this week, we've got ArbGeom. ArbGeom is a non-Euclidean marble game that gained rotational physics, improvements to scripting, and more. And more on UI in the educational section this week, Bevy Cobweb UI's book gained instructions on setting up a tab interface using, well, Bevy Cobweb UI. And that's it for this week. As always, we have all of the pull requests that were merged, as well as the issues and PRs that were opened if you're looking to get involved. 0.16 is looking to be a very exciting release, so I'm looking forward to it. I've already acquired a Game Boy Advance to try out the new ROMs, and I'll see you next week.